Hi friend, thanks for stopping by. I think we're gonna do something a little different today. Uh, I got some new equipment. It's the purple one. That is a Marshall Vintage Modern 2466 100 watt head. Really like the way it sounds. I like how the detail and body controls let you choose the gain of the high end and low end. Kind of reminds me of the old plexis when you jumper the channels and you could use volume one and volume two. Um, it's a KT66 power amp. It's a little different for me. I'm used to the EL34s. I've always liked the EL34s, but this one sounds great. There seems to be a small problem with it when you're running the foot switch and you want to change from low dynamic range to high dynamic range, you have to hit the foot switch twice. Now, I think I know what the problem is. So we're going to open up that foot switch and check it out. If that sounds good. Join me. Here it is. You see the purple a little bit better in this shot. The lighting's different. All right, let's turn this on. Got a purple light and a blue light. Front button works. But now it doesn't. Now you have to press it twice every time. Now what does that tell you? What that implies to me is this is the wrong foot switch for this amplifier. This is a latching switch and it should be a momentary switch. So we're gonna try replacing that. And the foot switch that does go with this does have a latching switch for the reverb because the reverb does go on and off with, with a single press. But I believe this one should be a momentary switch. So we're gonna replace this and see how it works out. All right, I've been trying to get these loose and it's just stripping out. The heads are soft and the, The heads are soft and the screws are rusted in there. Probably years of beer spilled. Tears. Probably screaming, fans spitting all over it. I mean, it is a purple amp, right? I don't know. I'm probably going to have to drill these out. Nothing fits. I have these jeweler screwdrivers. They fit in there, but I can't get enough purchase to turn it. And then I just end up stripping it out anyways. All right, let's bulldog it. May Jim Marshall forgive me for what I'm about to do. I wonder if I made it through that one. All right. I'm gonna pull these wires out and do you remember what I told you about heat tolerance on switches? I just melted this off of the old switch. So there's no keeping that one for any other purpose. We're gonna throw it out. I had to up the heat on the Heiko FX888 soldering station just to get this solder to start melting. So that's a garbage. I got the momentary switch in there. It's a little different. I might raise it up a little bit just because so it'll match the other one for feel. All we have to do is adjust this in the back here. Down a little bit more. Yeah, let's take care of that. That's better. Just raised it up a bit. Looks different, 
Nobody cares. All right. Had to end up drawing those screw heads out. There was no getting them out. Took more force than they had available. Okay, let's get this all soldered in. All I have to do is find my solder. There it is. Not to break anything. Rule number seven. Try not to break it while you're fixing it. All right, let's get this soldered in. Let me turn this back down to 750. 850 is way too much. That's a momentary, and that's the latching now. Everything should be working, but we're gonna test it. Then we gotta figure out how to get this back screwed together, huh? We have to replace these screws, they're shot. All right, no problem. Let's go. All right, got the amp plugged in, and looks like I was right. The problem was it was a momentary switch. But there's a problem still. When the foot switch is plugged in, this is supposed to work, and it doesn't. That tells me that this switch is either normally closed or normally open, and it needs to be the other one. So let's take it to the bench and try it out and see if it's normally closed or normally open. All right, got out my beautiful Harbor Freight cheapy all right let's hook these two sides up <laughs> it's normally closed all right so we need a normally open I thought this was but it is not let's switch it all right I got this one out of the bin normally open so we're going to replace this put this one back in the bin okie dokie so we should have checked what it needed first huh instead of having to do this twice that's equivalent of the word woodworkers. Measure twice, cut once. And here we are. I always cut twice too. When I do the woods. All right, let's get this back over there. Okay, here we are again. Let's see what happens. Switch is fine. Front works. Oh, it's a little flaky. The bouncy switch. This should do it. Uh, let's just hope. Let's see. All right. Got a clicky switch. It's momentary, but it clicks. All right. We got it fixed. Let's do some sound samples.
All right, this is the Marshall into my 212 that I built. Has two greenbacks in it. Um, I got my Lawler pickups in my Les Paul. We're in the blue channel on the Marshall. That's the low dynamic range. Let's give it a go. Let's get some reverb. Let's listen to how let's listen to how the volume control affects the gain on this amp. Really reactive. Here's ten. Let's go to nine. Seven. Five, three, two. It starts getting low here, and then it cuts off. I'll show you the settings I have on the amp right now. Uh, but let's try the white channel, high dynamic range. All right. So seven. Five, three, and two. Wow, what a tone machine that amp is. I love it. Really not used to the KT66s, but I'm, I'm really warming up to them. Uh, I'm glad that the fix was easy and quick. Um, it sounds great with the greenbacks. Now I have a Mesa dual rectifier, the three channel version. And uh, after getting this Marshall, I think that might be on the chopping block. I might just have to let the dual rectifier go. Normally when I get a used amp, I'll take the chassis out and I'll spray all the potentiometers and I'll clean out the tube sockets. I didn't do it this time because it looks like it was very well taken care of. Uh, I'm very happy with it. Um, there was no abuse. Uh, there's no crackling on the knobs. Uh, the only problem that I could see visually was the foot switch not working. Um, I'm still going to probably tear it apart. The problem a lot of people have with this amp is the volume difference between the low dynamic range and the high dynamic range. Um, it's not really a channel switcher amp even though it has two channels. Um, but I think
think I'm going to make a little mod, maybe on the foot switch or maybe internally, I'm not sure yet. I'll probably just make a change to the foot switch. That way I won't have to change anything internally. Um, internally might be the way to go though. Uh, the way I'm thinking, I'm going to have it so that when you switch to the high dynamic range, it puts a potentiometer in the effects loop that you could change the volume for that. Uh, the only problem with that is you could hit the button on the front and then the potentiometer would be on the low dynamic range instead. Um, I'm, I'm going to think about that, but we're going to revisit this one with a mod sort of like that. Um, all right, I think that's all for today. Uh, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it.